Have you ever thought about reinventing yourself but didn't know where to start? Kat, perpetual career chameleon, has been there. On this episode of Maiden Voyage, she'll share some of her stories and experiences that helped support her on her career journey. Women face unique challenges, from glass ceilings at work to everyday personal stressors. The Maiden Voyage podcast covers it all, offering tips and tricks for overcoming your struggles. While this lady-hosted podcast focuses heavily on women's issues, it's relevant for anyone who values self-improvement, equality, and badass inspiration. We all navigate this journey together. Welcome aboard. Kat, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Catherine, or Kat, from K and Black is a career and leadership coach, and she's a recruiter. Her background is in advertising, design, and branding. She started her career as a graphic designer. She transitioned into recruiting, and over the years has had a number of side hustles. She's on an e-commerce brand that was very exciting and informative that I hope we get to talk about on this episode today. And she also practices sound healing and Reiki. So Catherine, thanks again for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. We're pumped. Um, so you described yourself and we introduced you as the perpetual career chameleon. And I love that. It's so much what I think about when I think about you. So I would love for you to tell our listeners a little bit about your own career transition and how you've known in your career and life when it's time for a change. Sure. Um, so for me, like I've just done, I've just always done what I call like following the thread. Like, I've just always been someone who is curious and open to new experiences. And the minute that um, I'm starting to get bored or I'm starting to feel stuck, I'm like, hmm, maybe it's time to tweak something and just like follow that in a different direction. So when I started my career, I really thought I wanted to be uh, like super hip, cool advertising, branding, creative. And like, I was going to design logos, like, you know, people at inner brand and like, I was going to work with all these big brands. And I ended up working at a crazy little social media agency and ended up doing like five different jobs. <laughs> and so at the time I was like, this is way too much work. I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Um, it, it was a really difficult job. And where it landed me was having to hire a bunch of other creatives on my team, other designers. And because I was not the only creative on my team, I was de facto the hiring manager. So then it kind of started to lead me towards people management and recruiting. And as time went on, I was like, oh, I keep wanting to spend more time doing the people stuff and like managing my team. And I'm really starting to avoid my design projects. <laughs> so to me, that was kind of a signal of, all right, you know what, maybe I'm onto something, like maybe I should look into doing recruiting and like talent management. So I talked to a few people who I know, I knew in the industry and ended up speaking with the two people I currently work for. They were like the first two people I sat down with. I was just asking them about like, Hey, what's recruiting? How does it work? What do I do? And um, then we just really connected and the rest is history. So then I've been there for almost six years now. Um, and with them, you know, my role at this one job has evolved. I've had a clothing brand side hustle. I've had a sound healing side hustle during this time and Reiki and tapped into different things. Um, and eventually I think when I started recruiting, I thought recruiting was actually coaching. <laughs> I thought it was career coaching, but then realized, oh, we work for the companies, not for talent. Um, but then thankfully the people I work for really, we always wanted that to be something that we could really offer um, as a service to talent. And so we created it together. And now I've been coaching for um, about four years now on and off. And and now I'm also in a place of transition where I'm like, hmm, I don't know, what's next? So we'll see. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> That's exciting. I just, I love watching you over time embrace change and probably jump and dive into it. Um, it's always exciting for me to see like, oh, here's what's next for Kat. Here's what's, what's going on here. That's really cool. And it's never it's never a boring change, right? You're never going backwards. You're never saying, mm, I tried this for a while. I'm going to go back to design or go back to agency. You're always pushing yourself 
forward. And I have to imagine as a coach, you use that experience to help push other people forward and get them moving in the direction that's right for them too. For um, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's all about just staying curious and just staying open, you know, to what, what's, what feels good or what doesn't feel good. I find it really interesting that you use this term like following the thread. I love that. First of all, there's like so many places in our lives that we can utilize a technique like that. Um, but it also sounds like though you kind of found yourself in this opportunistic first step where it was a small agency, it sounds like, and you kind of had to wear many hats. Do you think yeah. because you were put in this position so early in your career where you had to force yourself to kind of diversify your skill set, that then gave you the freedom to do that again? Because I feel like I'm a one trick pony. And you know what I mean? Like I've always done the same thing. I've done it at different kinds of organizations, but I've stayed very much like in my lane. But I haven't been given opportunity per se at other organizations to like, hey, you want to try to write ad copy? Like nobody calls the salesperson generally to write ad copy, you know? So it's just very interesting to me that like where you found yourself first kind of opened your door maybe to that. I mean, do you find that to be something that rings true? Or is that more of like who you are as a person where you like really put your feelers out to do more than was asked of you? Yeah, I, I think it's totally totally a combo, you know, like nature and nurture, um, at the same time. Um, I am that kind of person. Like I just have a lot of different interests. I'm like doing a bunch of different things and keeping it interesting. So that's totally part of, you know, my personality and just who I am. Um, but at the same time, like I kind of took that opportunity Honestly, there were times where like, I was like, I want to quit this job. I almost quit several times because it was really hard and they were definitely overutilizing me um, and kind of taking advantage as a junior person doing like four different jobs. <laughs> um, but I decided to take that opportunity and say, yeah, you know what? Let me make this what I want to make it and just do it. And that that opportunity, like as hard as it was certain days and I would like, go home and want to cry, um, I would not be where I am today without that opportunity and that job. Um, I don't know how I would have found recruiting because I feel like few people go to college and they're like, yeah, I'm going to do recruiting. So I'm gr really grateful for the, for that experience for sure. Was it scary for you to, to make that leap and that change from the beginning? Uh, like what kind of, what gave you the wind beneath your wings to kind of make that leap of faith? It was really scary. Yeah, I, I had like all of these, um, you know, words in my head, voices in my head, like, you're a good designer. Like, who are you to just give that up? Like, you're just going to say, no, I'm not going to design anymore. Like, who are you to do that? <laughs> and I, I really had those thoughts. But then I... I decided, you know what, I knew a recruiter who used to contract at our agency and we got along well. And I was like, let me just reach out to her, have a conversation. And through talking to her, she was like, yeah, like you, you could totally do this. You're already doing it. And she gave me a couple other contacts to speak with. And I just started talking to people and asking questions. And through that reassurance and that information, I realized like, okay, you know, there were, and there were some people who were like, mm, it's going to be kind of hard for you. Like you might have to just start out as like a creative coordinator, like scheduling interviews. Sorry. Um, and I took that as information was like, okay, thanks. And then there were other people who like my bosses now were like, you know what, we're going to take a risk and hire you because okay. you know what, we think you have something. So yeah, it was a mix of like talking to people, personal, you know, kind of shutting down some of those doubtful voices and just taking a leap of faith and being open to it. So there's something I've heard you say now that is a common theme um, in the quick few minutes we've been talking is that you do what I would call informational interviews. Yes. And yeah. do you recommend, maybe, do you talk about that as a career coach? And like, I've, I've been career coach, obviously, in my, in my career. Um, I have a dear friend of mine who um, does career coaching, mm -hmm. and um, 
has always, I'm always like, just fix my resume or what, I, you know, help me negotiate this salary. Like I've gone to her over my career because she's, I've known her, she's a, a little older than me, but I've known her since I was in college. Um, so she's been very helpful in my own personal career, but she was really big on informational interviews because sometimes you just don't know what you want to do, but you know what you don't want to do. And an informational interview can be a really helpful piece. So I'd love for you to maybe, and maybe I'm jumping the gun, but to like talk a little bit about that kind of technique, because you've obviously used it in your career. A hundred percent. Yes. And I feel like this comes up so often, especially now um, with people who are really seriously considering significant career shifts and like, how do I even start? And what I always tell people is just start talking to people. Like, I know it seems scary. You're afraid to like reach out to someone you don't know. You feel icky. Like, am I asking for something? I feel like I'm taking advantage. No, like none of that. Put that voice aside. Um, it's about, and instead of informational interview, I just call it like building a relationship, starting a conversation, asking questions. Like, that's really what it's about. Um, and so what I recommend to people is like, just send someone a short note and say like, hey, I love, you know, I love your background. Like, I love what you do. You're, the company you work for looks for really, looks really interesting. You know, I would just love to learn more about you and, you know, what you're up to. I'm thinking about maybe changing and doing something like that. And, you know, either way, grateful for your time. Thanks so much. And just putting it that way where you are reaching out to someone to start a conversation versus like make it a thing or like get a job right away. I think that takes some of the pressure off and allows you to just be curious and like meet new people, build relationships. Well, and ultimately like as coming from my line of work in sales, like people like to talk about themselves. Of course. <laughs> So if you can get, if you can ask someone like about themselves, they're going to ultimately want to talk to you. I, I think it's a terrific technique when you're looking to like grow yourself professionally or personally. Cause like, even like with the sound healing work that you've done, like I find that to be so interesting. We will not go off that deep end right now. Um, but I, I just think that it's something that can be used in so many aspects of our lives. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And even just like, making a new friend like oh this person on instagram looks really cool like would they like have a zoom call with me just go for it you know you just never know who you're gonna meet and what you're gonna learn that's terrifying <laughs> is it like sending just an instagram dm to someone yes um yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes so we did we did a whole episode on making friends as an adult and I don't, did we talk about sliding into someone's DMs in that episode? Maybe we should have. To how, how do you find the courage to do that? It, you know, I always tell people like a way to take the pressure off is just like start with a compliment, compliment sandwich, your note, like, Hey, I really liked this. I really loved this post, you know, that you wrote, um, you know, I think you're really cool. Like, would you be open to chatting sometime or hanging out? You know, thanks so much either way. And I think that like, you know, it's nice. Like people like talking about themselves. They like getting compliments and it kind of, they're like, oh, thanks so much. You know, it's so nice. And then if they, what's the worst that can happen, right? Like they don't respond or like they say something crazy to you. Like, oh, why are you missing me? Which honestly, I have never in my experience with all of my candidates and clients, like I've never heard anyone get that kind of response. The worst case scenario is usually they just don't respond and that's not so bad. It's okay, right? <laughs> um, and oh some God. people won't respond and, and that's all right. But at least, you know, you don't, you don't get what you don't ask for, so. Put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> right. Put it on a t-shirt, um, which we'll circle back on in a minute. Um, <laughs> Before we do that, I want to back up for a second. So earlier you said when you started recruiting, you think you thought recruiting was coaching and then you learned it wasn't. So I want to jump up ahead on that and find out how did you find coaching and figure out what that was through mm -hmm. all of that and kind of use that to fuel your transition. 
Sure. Um, so when I started recruiting, yeah, I think I wanted to recruit because I loved working with um, candidates and helping them navigate their career journey um, and talking to people and just having that connection. And, and that's definitely a, a huge part of recruiting. But at the end of the day, you are working for, you know, a company um, who's coming to us as, um, you know, talent consultants and helping them find talent for their company. Um, so that's the agenda, although we advocate definitely both for candidates and clients equally, uh, at least at our firm. So with that, you know, my bosses had actually talked about starting a career coaching division before I started. And when we were sitting down just talking about like best practices with recruiting, how to have tough conversations with salaries and like, you know, with talent, asking them really deep questions, we were like, you know what, I think we should really, I think my boss said to me, like, I think you should be a part of this coaching division. Like you seem like you really are interested in that part of things. And in that conversation, we just kind of got the ball rolling and started, you know, building this division and asked, you know, some other people in our industry, hey, we're thinking about maybe doing coaching, where would you get trained? You know, what's, what's the best way to get accredited? Because we wanted to make sure we were educated. Um, and so I found coactive training, um, which Seriously, it was life changing and like a master's program in coaching. It, it's really intense and an extensive training. And there's no like, oh, we're going to role play this. It's like, no, you show up and like you are getting coached. Like someone is coaching you. That is your training. <laughs> and you're coaching them like right away, day one. <laughs> so through that, I realized, wow this can really change people's lives and it's really powerful and I want to keep going. Like, let's do it. So that was how it kind of evolved over time. That's really cool. Um, I remember years ago um, when you had probably first started this, you had asked if I could speak with, I think someone else in your program with you as like an initial coaching session yeah that was like a hundred a hundred years ago maybe it feels like um yeah. I don't know if I realized that that type of um like I know you're thinking like you're being coached but it was so so hands-on the whole time yes totally that's, an experiential education yeah. yeah yeah that's fascinating I feel was that was I a guinea pig was I a test subject <laughs> I discussed in my case study. <laughs> well, we won't be breach confidentiality, but in terms of technique, it was practice for my friend. So, <laughs> Very cool. um, and through that experience, obviously, you went into coaching with career and recruiting on your mind already. Um, but how did your specialty in coaching emerge? I think it was kind of natural, like as a recruiter you know, you already, there are already a lot of questions that candidates want to ask me, like, how do I position myself on LinkedIn? And, you know, that tactile stuff of like, or how do I write that networking note to someone I don't know? What do I say? How do I negotiate this salary? How do I have a difficult conversation with my boss? So all of these things were things that I deal with on a daily basis already with recruiting. And so bringing that knowledge to combine with, you know, a coaching background, um, career and leadership coaching just made so much sense because I'm already so steeped in that space. Um, and it's fun, you know, I love, for a while, I thought I wanted to go totally like sound healing Reiki, like I'm gonna be a spiritual coach, like your spiritual life coach. And then I realized, you know what, maybe there's a way to like bring this stuff in through career and leadership coaching to people in advertising, who's mostly who I work with, like kind of through the back door, like, hey, this is career and leadership coaching, but like who I am is also bringing all these, you know, my design background, like sound healing, Reiki, like it's all, it's all part of it. So 
and that's that's kind of how I approach it now. That's fantastic. I know that some of our other mermaids have follow-up questions around sound healing and Reiki and um, all of that, I keep saying, I don't have a vocabulary for it. So I don't even know how to ask you questions about it other than I see you sometimes. Um, I probably will have some questions after. I'm interested in how it all kind of integrates and works together. But yeah. Jackie, I feel like you, ha you have a tip of the tongue question that you are ready. So my, um, my connection with sound healing is through a physical practice. Like you're in a yoga class and they're doing sound healing and they're doing Reiki and they're doing oils and like all this kind of karmic expression within the class. I'm not familiar with sound healing outside of a physical practice. So like, I would love to understand how it works in either, like how it works outside of like off the yoga mat, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, so my background specifically is, you know, I was trained in, um, healing with Tibetan singing bowls or Himalayan singing bowls specifically. Um, and you know, like as human beings, we are mostly made of water. And so if you think of like the effects of, um, a sound bowl, you know, everything's vibrating, right? As human beings and there's a lot of water in our bodies so if you think of it as like sound waves kind of looking like um like raindrops on a pond when you see all of that so essentially when you're sitting in some kind of sound bath um or even when you're like at a concert or something sound waves are going to be a little different you know different effects on your body um but that's essentially what's like happening inside your body um you know all of those I mean, like concerts make me really happy so i totally hear what you're saying there mm -hmm. live music gets my soul pumping for sure yeah like everything is vibration and so depending on what kind of vibration you're bringing into a space and an experience like that's going to change the way that you are responding physically mentally emotionally spiritually um and so specifically Tibetan or Himalayan singing bowls, um, you know, these are tools that are thousands of years old and, you know, they used to be used by the monks in the Himalayas and they figured out that like these could be used to put you into that delta state of meditation and relaxation and getting the body to, uh, to heal, um, which is pretty cool. I feel like that thousands of years ago, they were like, oh, this works. And now we're here like, Oh, hey, have you seen these like cool singing bowl things? Like we're rediscovering them. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, and are you utilizing like this practice in career coaching as well? Or is this like a separate aspect of, you know, one of the many things that sounds like you're talented at? I definitely like bring elements of that practice, you know, into my coaching. Um, you know, I think it, it depends on the client and what that person needs, but especially with, you know, I used to, when I was in New York and I did more in-person coaching sessions in like a WeWork in Times Square, the vibration of the WeWork in Times Square is like, bah! <laughs> It's like crazy and people are like rushing from the subway so they'd come into a session like kind of stressed out and discombobulated and so a lot of times I would say all right sit down close your eyes I'm gonna play this bowl is it cool if I you know clear your aura with this bowl and we'll just listen to it for a minute before we start our session and they'd be like oh yeah cool like awesome yes please for the love of God yes. like I feel like that's the response <laughs> For the love of God, clear my aura, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it would completely change, you know, how that person was feeling. And I think how they entered the session oh, to then God. allow them to just be present and open up a bit. So, and I still use it over Zoom. Like, you know, it's, it's different because you don't physically feel the vibrations. That's a big part of that experience. Yeah. But it's still very helpful and just kind of like setting a tone and space and intentionally. Yeah. I love that, that setting of the intention. Um, our boss is a Reiki master. Cool. 
And I have just decided that moving forward, he needs to rakeify our meet before we do meetings. He needs to like clear our space. Like, why are we not taking advantage of this? Yeah. Is rakeify like, the technical term? I love that. Is that, is that it? I like it. I think we should keep it. The rakeification of our meetings. Yeah, we'll just, we're going to lean into that. Yeah. Thank you for so sharing that. I, I could talk, I'm so intrigued by all of that, but um, I yeah. think maybe I'd love to talk more about um, kind of the pivots. Uh, uh, Kristen, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'd love to talk more about, um, you know, the world needs to be rankified right now, okay? What kind of pivots, though, are you seeing people make in 2020? And, like, how has your coaching changed over the last, call it, 100 days to help combat, you know, what's just going on in our environment? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I mean, I think in terms of the approach, I think the biggest thing right now is, like, just having compassion with ourselves. Like, I saw some artist made this uh, post the other day that was like, sorry, I haven't responded to your email. Um, I'm just dealing with a revolution and a pandemic right now. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, like, it's okay. There's a lot going on. <laughs> So I think that's something that comes up a lot in my coaching right now. It's just like, your, your kids are at home. You're trying to be school teacher, camp counselor. You're trying to maybe like change your career because maybe you got furloughed or you're just, this is making you reevaluate your life or like, there's a lot of things happening. So let's just like give ourselves some self-compassion and care and like, um, be really gentle right now because we like we're alive at this time for a reason like I think we're really strong people um, and you know we have a lot of courage and this is a big moment but at the same time balance it with let's also just back to basics take care of ourselves while we hold that you know serious life change um, at the same time so that's been a difference in my approach, just being especially gentle. And in terms of the pivots, um, it can be anything. I think this time, although it is incredibly difficult and there's a lot of like pain and healing and change going on, um, it's creating these opportunities for people where they maybe didn't we're afraid to start that business or we're like, there's no, like, why should I quit this job? It's, you know, it's giving me everything I need. And now when that's taken away, like, maybe I will start writing for um, like one of my candidates now. She stopped freelancing and she's now writing a blog about diversity and inclusion initiatives and doing that. Um, you know, someone else was like, I, I got laid off from my ad job, so I'm just going to start this new um, building blocks toy for kids. You know, like those old uh, cardboard like blocks that you used to have. He like started a whole new brand. So you could do one of anything. I <laughs> think the possibilities are endless right now, and I'm seeing people just kind of follow what they're interested in and go for it. I think it's interesting. I think people, like you said, are looking... So like, I, I think right now is causing people, I mean, we're all very blessed, first of all, at our agency that we've successfully come through and haven't had to make any drastic, um, you know, changes to our personnel. We're very blessed and we know that. But I also see friends who are just like, even though they're in a good situation, like, fuck, is this what I want to be doing? Like, and it's hard to be soul searching yet thankful yeah, I just think there's so many emotions right now with people, but I do see a lot of friends of mine who are like, get the hell out of here. Like this, this, this is not where I'm going to be when the world implodes. And I think that people are taking the time to like dig a little deeper into maybe what brings them peace and to like seek that out, which from like back to what you originally said, like following that thread, it just feels very full circle that that's, something you do personally, but also bring to your call, to your, um, what do you call them? The people you coach. Uh, what would clients. You, clients. You bring yeah. to your clients. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, you know, I just want to call out something you said, like, so something someone said to me the other day, like, it's okay to feel like 10 different emotions at the same time right now. Like, you can feel grateful and also like, I hate this. <laughs> That's fine. We can just hold all of that right now because these times are complicated and those are all valid. <laughs> what's, what's one thing do you, wow, I'm trying to sentence again. <laughs> what? I'm telling you, this is the doozy of a day. Um, what's one thing that you think everyone can do right now as they're grappling with the sheer volume of feelings and uh, frustrations and conflicting everything going through their heads? Um, just take like one minute to just do something nice for yourself whether you need to just take a minute and breathe and meditate, um, whether you need to just take a minute and make a cup of tea, um, you know, pet your dog, uh, play with your kid for a little bit, like, you know, do some stretching. I think it's just, just taking even that small amount of time to just pause um, because, yeah, I think there's so much happening right now where it can just spiral into my gosh like what am I gonna do and anxiety and depression and a lot of a lot of things um so just taking a second when you see you realize you're in that space just pause like set a timer for a minute and just stop what you're doing set a timer I love that that's like major I accountability I mean it's a long time I mean it's a lot I say you just like gave us all home to go meditate that's what you should yeah. do. You said, yeah, I mean, <laughs> does a minute to do something for yourself include half a pint of Ben and Jerry's? Uh, if you want, yeah. Great, terrific. If, if that's comforting right now and it feels good and you need that, go for it. <laughs> Great, she's ahead of the game. Well, <laughs> yeah, I feel like we need things that just bring us joy right now and comfort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. right. Um, I, I actually had a question, uh, Kat. Do you sure. think that, especially since uh, the pandemic has come about, that even though people are trying to confront like and follow what they're interested in, that they're getting hung up on this weird, like, what am I supposed to do versus like what I want to do? Yes, um, for sure. And I mean, honestly, that's something that naturally comes up pretty much with anybody I start coaching. Um, I always tell them like, I'm just letting you know, it's totally normal when we start this process, those negative voices and those like I should be doing and this is logical are immediately going to come up because you are trying to make a change. And the purpose of those, you know, you can call them saboteur or gremlin or people call them different things, um, inner critic. Um, the purpose of those is to keep you safe and in your comfort zone, which is very helpful, you know, when we're children and we're, you know, just trying to keep ourselves like physically safe and cared for. Um, but as adults, you know, it's not always necessarily a life or death choice to make that kind of change people have felt like so much extra like responsibility to just do so much while things are so difficult right now mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah like mainly just wondering like you know what do you tell someone who's like really struggling with what they feel is their responsibility versus like what's going to make them happy so i yeah i would just like listen really deeply to what um those like thoughts and feelings are actually saying to you like does it feel like a should and like I have to and it feels kind of icky and heavy and like oh I really don't want to do that um or is it more like um in the direction of oh, this is something that excites me. And you know what, this feels a little scary. 
I feel a little nervous about it, but like I feel actually energized and I'm feeling excited towards that. So I would just say like notice where, how you're feeling in both of those scenarios. Um, and you know, and it's okay, like if responsibility to you, um, sometimes that's not necessarily a saboteur, that's actually just like a value. Like it's important to me that I support my family and my kids. And like, I need to make sure that that is, um, you know, that the, I have that income coming in. Like that can be a value and not like, oh, well, I should just only take this full-time job because like, it's kind of working right now and I get benefits, you know, see how that feels different than like, I just need to do something that's going to support my family because I love them. So like, let me open up to if it's a new full-time job or whatever it is, like just noticing those different energies. I yeah, love that. Yeah. I've just like, I've seen a couple of friends have to make really tough decisions, like being furloughed from like their job. And like just having to take like whatever job paid the highest so that they knew they were taking care of their family. And they're like, this is going to be awful to endure for like the next year. And like that, that like made me so sad, like, cause that's all been in the last couple of months. Cause that's really, that's a really hard like choice, right? Like, it, and it's, it's nuts. It is a hard choice. And I want to acknowledge that like, yes, like sometimes that is the necessarily necessary choice and you know, it is a position of privilege to sometimes be able to say no to that job that you really hate. Um, so I want to like acknowledge that in the space here. Um, and I think there's room to say, okay, maybe this is what I need to do right now. And like, what, how can I find like gifts and joy and learning out of this role? If this is what I feel I, you know, I should be doing right now. And how do I grow from that? Go from here. Maybe that job allows you to experience like fun and joy with your kids because you are not so stressed out about income. You know, it doesn't always have to be about like, this job's going to fulfill every part of my life too. Yeah. For sure. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sometimes it, like, I just don't, I don't know. It's, a, it's hard whenever like you have some like people that are, you're close to that are going through that. You're like, I don't know what to say right? They're like, what do I do? I'm like, I don't know. Like, do you write by your family? Like, that's always like my first like gut instinct to say, right? But that's, it's tough. Yeah. And really like only, only you can know in your heart, like what feels right. Yeah. Um, am I like a believer in like, please don't let the shoulds start to rule your whole life. Um, but you know, this, these are times where we have to make tough choices. And so just follow what feels good to you. You know the answers, you know, for yourself. And don't they like, doesn't, I'm going to mess this up, but like a diamond comes from like pressure. Right. And so like maybe <laughs> the pressure we're feeling today is only going to be putting us and our families in a better position six to nine months from now. Like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's hard. Pete, you're right. People are having to make hard life decisions, but I feel like Kat, your energy is so like grounded and like your vibration is like it's such a generous low that I'm like, can only imagine people so much enjoy talking to you on a regular basis because it is soothing. <laughs> your presence is very soothing. You are in the light, right line of work for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you fixed my yeah. mind today. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna, gotta, we have to listen to the replay on this one. This Did we fantastic. just get Zoom Reiki? Can you Zoom Reiki? Did it happen? I think Did it happened. happened with your voice? <laughs> it's the voice thing? Hey, voice is also vibration and sound. You did so. it. Well, you're in my ears, so maybe. <laughs> Isn't Reiki through touch, right? Do you have to like physically touch someone? Because it's like the energy centers or like I heard people talking about how you can like hover a hand over someone's like feel that. Like, do you need, can you do Reiki virtually? I guess that is my question. Do you need to have like a physical contact? 
No, you totally can. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, like, yes, I totally respect. I am, you know, have gone through Reiki um, attunement myself and many people have done it. But I also want to acknowledge the power that like we have just as, you know, lay people, humans, like you can just, you can literally use your own hands to, to like, you know, affect your energy. Um, you can hold them like out, you can put them on you. Um, a lot of times I'll just like put my hands on my head because I get headaches a lot and just like send energy there and like send light there and whew, my headache feels better in like a couple minutes, you know? So, but yeah, you people, you might see practitioners who work with hands on the body, which you can, and sometimes they're out here and they're actually working like in your energetic field on those different layers. Um, or they can do it, um, you know, virtually as well, like from a distance um, and just kind of visualize where that energy is going. So, oh, and you can do that yourself, like for your loved ones who are far away right now, you know, just envision them with like a bubble of light, you know, hey, I'm sending you a virtual hug with my energy. So we can all do it. It's pretty cool. Love well, I'm sending you a virtual hug right now until we can see each other again and we can have a real life hug. Is there anything else that you want to share in our last couple of minutes here before we wrap up, my friend? Oh, I, I do just want to say, like, um, as part of our conversation before about, like, the should and the, you know, th that part, um, I just want to acknowledge that, like, I myself right now, technically, as a recruiter, I'm furloughed. Like, our recruiting business right now is not really happening. There are some things that are happening, but not, not like it was. Um, and so I am in the middle of my own being in that position where I'm like, wow, the in where I used to get pretty much all, most of my income, like 70% of it, that's just not here anymore. So what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to survive? Like, what's going to happen? And I think I went through that panic you know, at first, and also a sadness, like, oh, wow, I, I think we have to acknowledge, too, like, when you lose your job, you're, like, mourning, you kind of have grief about it, like, you mourn it, like, oh, wow, that's not there anymore, I don't go to that office anymore, like, I don't see those people, like, it has its own grief process, um, no matter if you get laid off or fired or anything, um, so I went through that, and then it was, like, okay, this has to be happening for a reason. I've been thinking about, I love where I work, I love my job, but I've been thinking about like, what's next for me too? So I don't know, but I'm open to it. So I just wanna share that as like, hey, I'm in this with you too. Like we're all in it. So <laughs> it might be different shapes, sizes, forms, but like no matter what, I think in some form or it's all happening for everybody, so yeah but we'll see what's next we will see what's next um well thank you for sharing all of that and for for so candidly bringing us into your world and your life and sharing those great tidbits and your advice i feel like we are all ready to head into the rest of our afternoon today um like so refreshed so ready to go so this has been an absolute pleasure um, and I thank you again for joining us. Can't wait to talk to you again. Um, for anyone who is listening or watching, if they're interested in connecting with you, learning more about you, following along on your journey, what's the best place for them to connect with you? Sure. So you can find me on LinkedIn, um, Catherine Freund, um, or you can follow me on Instagram at Catherine A. Freund. Fantastic. And that is Catherine with a K mm -hmm. and R and a Y. So K-A-T-H-R-Y-N if you're looking for Kat on social media. Well, thank you again. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, and until our next episode, thank you for listening to Maiden Voyage.
Sadly, that'll do it for this week's episode of Maiden Voyage. We'd like to thank you, our amazing listeners, because let's face it, lady life is hard. It's incredible how much we accomplish every day, and we all deserve awards just for existing. If you're watching the show, make sure that you subscribe, click on that thing for instant notifications, speak your mind in the comments, and share us with your fellow Voyagers.